So we need to get into inverse situations here. Destiny, welcome. Inverse relations and functions. All right. Basically, the inverse is everything's reversed. So normal procedure for a function. You determine the input, the independent variable value, and you find the output what output goes with a given input. You put in the x, the function tells you the value of the y. For an inverse, we're going to go backwards. You input the output and output the input. In is out, out is in. Everything's reversed. Aren't you excited? The whole world is upside down. All right, some of you would like that, right? Upside down world. Sound exciting? It's, it's really not that hard, uh, but you do have to keep track of the fact that things are backwards. All right. So the inverse is when you input a value of the range to output its corresponding value of the domain. But you can't get caught up with the words. Otherwise, because guess what? The output or member of the range becomes the input or the actual domain of your inverse. And what would have been the input of the regular one becomes the output of your inverse. They so you just switch. The X's and Y switch. You just switch. So look at the example here. Oh, let me do the notation first. What is the notation? It's a negative one. So the function to the negative 1. Could be a capital A, could be a lowercase f. f to the negative 1, g to the negative 1, h to the negative 1 of x is the notation. And how do you read it? The inverse of a or a inverse? Okay, the inverse of a of a or a inverse. By the way, you know, if, you, if I had something like this, f to the negative 1 of x, you know, if I wanted to use the algebra rule, I could write that like that, right? 1 over the function, but 1 over anything is its inverse anyhow, and that's why they chose a notation of negative 1. But this isn't technically what's going on. It's just we're using the notation for the concept of inverse, right? You're not actually doing that to the inverse per se. All right, so that's the notation. Uh, students will lose points when I'll ask you to give the inverse of a function and you won't finish off with that notation. So be careful there. We'll cover that again in a moment. So here's an example. We've got a relation here, really, and it's the B relation, and it's negative 2, 3, and you can see that that point is right there, right? And you got the point negative 2, 5, and that point is right there, and you got the point negative 1, 1, and that point is right there, and you got the point 3, 5, and that point is right there. I just happen to give it a border and fill in the shape just for illustrative purposes. So let's go ahead and do the inverse. I'm just going to take my green, and instead of the green being second, it's going first. And I'm just swapping the first point out. So this thing is going to be 3. I'll take my red and negative 2. All right, it's the other way around. Instead of negative 2, 3, we got the point 3, negative 2. So I'm going to take my red and I'm going to go to 3, negative 2 on my graph and plot that point at 3, negative 2. Everybody with me? All right, so for time's sake, I'm just going to take my green and now just do all the greens first off, right? I'm just swapping them all out here, putting them first. So I put the five first in the second one, the one first in the third, and the five first in the last, right? Again, just follow, you do it, you know, you're swapping your X's and Y's. So therefore, the second one will be five, negative two, third one will be one, negative one, and the fourth one will be five, three, right? And go ahead and plot those other three points. I'll plot them as well, and you can look up if you need help, but you know how to plot points. I'm going to fill it in 
just for illustrative purposes. Do a little bit of shading. So again, you just plot the point 3, negative 2, 5, negative 2, 1, negative 1, Earth to Daydreamers, and 5, 3, right? So what can you tell me about the original shape and its inverse? What can you tell me? Reflected. It is reflected. It's definitely a reflection. All right, we've talked about being reflected about the y-axis or the x-axis. We talked about being reflected about the y-axis. We even talked about reflected um, across a certain line. So this is reflected across that diagonal line, right? And so that's the, that's the reflection. Every inverse is this way. So the graph of the inverse, you could say mirrors or reflects. Reflects the function or mirrors is the same concept. Mirrors the function or relation about a how many degree angle is that that's a 45 degree angle inverses are always reflected about a 45 degree angle so don't do this in your notes because it'll just it'll get in the way of what you need to see but you can see this point is reflected across to there this point and by the way these are all perpendicular lines is a reflected across to there this point is reflected across to there, and this point is reflected across to there. Now, you guys did some of this in geometry with perpendicular lines and reflections, but that's what's going on, and now we're doing it mathematically. Okay, so that's the concept we want to do it mathematically. Um, when you talk about trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, and this would go all the way back to pre-algebra for you, but a 45 degree angle is the same as the tangent of 45 degrees. And what kind of slope is that line? What, what's the value of the slope of this line? It's 1. And we usually don't put the 1, but I'm going to put it in for emphasis. Right, the slope is one of this line. Tangent 45 degrees is the exact same thing as a line with a slope of one that goes to the origin. Notice there's no b value, right? So it's y equals x plus zero if we did mx plus b. It's just y equals x. Slope of one. So a slope of one is the same as tangent of 45 degrees. And again, every inverse is reflected about the slope of one through the origin or the tangent of 45 degrees. Higher up in math, that becomes even more important. That's just a concept right now. Okay. But reflected about that 45 degree angle, we'll deal with that in just a couple minutes. Okay, so let's do some reflecting here. Thank you, Windows. All right, so in the first situation, I graph the green function. So just to be clear, and again, don't mark yours, but we would always do the y-intercept first, right? 0, 2, and that's that point right there. And then we would use the slope, and from there we go up 2, and we go to the right 5, and there's that point, and there's the line, right? So that's the green line. So to reflect this or give the inverse, what we want to do is we want to be able to take points and transcribe them. So you can do this if you want. Circle that point. So let's take that point and do that point for its inverse. What would be the coordinates of its inverse? Okay, that one is 0, 2, so the inverse would be 2, 0. So right there is that one's inverse. Let's go ahead and do this point up here. So what would be its inverse? Okay, that one's 5, 4, so the inverse is 4, 5, right? So that's right there. And I do have one other point marked here. 
And you can do it with any of the points. That one is negative 5, 0, so it's got to be 0, negative 5, right? And then take your red and try to draw a nice straight line through those points. Okay, if I would have drew well, it would have gone right through that point there as well where they intersect, of course. All right, I'm a little bit off on my drawing. Because where they cross, where the original function crosses the 45 degree angled line, and you guys understand the 45 degree angle line is just there for illustrative purposes. There is no real 45 degree angle line. It's just there so we know where to reflect it. All right, it's just for an illustration. So the green function is there and now the red. All right, so who can write the um, who can write the equation of the red function? Equation of the red function. What's the what's the y-intercept of the red function? Okay, so we know that that's the b value, right? So what's the slope of the red function? Uh, so negative five, positive five halves, right? And that is the inverse of the f function. And again, notice notation f to the negative one, right? Indicate inverses. I, again, if you're asked to write the, the equation of a line, you need two things. You need the slope, you need the y-intercept. We could read them off of there. All right, the second one is a complex function because it's not a straight line, it's not a parabola, it's got directional changes, kind of complex. Can you reflect it? Go ahead and try to reflect it. Do the inverse of the green one. Draw it in red on the graph there. I'm going to pause the video and see if you can do that. What a bummer. That's life of not being in class, right? What can I say? All right, such is life. So we just unfroze. All right, I'll fast forward. I don't even know where in the world I froze it. Probably back there. All right, so let me give you a quick review here. Don't miss all the other good stuff in between, but that's life. That's what happens in real life. So in order to have an inverse, got to be a one-to-one -one correspondence. What is that? Pass the horizontal line test. I still have no idea what that means, will I? After all that explanation of, what, 10 minutes? <laughs> they don't need to know restricted domains and stuff. That's the bottom line gist. Oh, well, that's life. Read the book. All right, number three. <laughs> How do you do it mathematically? Replace every x with y and every y with x. Solve for y. And then here's a part students often forget and you got to take points off. Remember to put the inverse notation f to the negative 1 of x in for the y. And again, if it begins with y, we'll always use f to the negative 1. If it started out f of x, then we'll end up f to the negative 1 of x. If it started out h of x, we'll end up with h to the negative 1 of x, etc. All right, let's do these mathematically. They're not really that hard. Okay, so first example, pretty simplistic. It's linear. So the first thing you're going to do is where there's an x, put a y, and where there's a y, put an x. You can do that. Swap the x's and y's. Where you see an x, put a y. Where you see a y, put an x. Solve the equation for y. All right, move the two. Move the 5. Probably the quickest way is just divide that by 5. That's as good a form as anything else, except if you're graphing Jeff. No Kool-Aid for Jeff. He's the only one. Not shrinking. Right, add a positive 2 to both sides, move to negative 2. rest of you are drinking Kool-Aid. What a shame. All right, and as far as form goes... I could leave it that way or I could split it up because I'm going to graph it. I'll split it up, but don't forget the f to the negative 1 where the y is. And let's just split this up into x over 5 plus 2 fifths. All right, x over 5 plus 2 fifths. So let's graph that. Y intercept of 2 fifths. I don't know, about there maybe is 2 fifths. And go up one into the right five, 
one, two, three, four, five. And if everything is right with the world, that will look like it's reflected about that 45 degree angle. And it does. Right. Not a big deal. Oh, by the by the way, and some of you just sit there and you don't ask questions and I keep telling you over and over again, this is your problem. This is why you have issues. Uh, probably 10 of you could not remember that you got to divide that five into all terms on the top of a fraction and miss that problem on the test. Because it was something like nine plus three times the square root of X over three and you wanted to say three instead of nine over three plus three times the square root of six over three which really it should have been that, and you should have gotten 3 plus the square root of 6. But so you just sit there and you don't say to yourself, well, why is that one x over 5 plus 2 over 5, and the one I did wasn't? All right, you got to think. Okay, second one. So we got a quadratic. I've already graphed it. By the way, notice it's horizontal parabola. Because what's our normal parabola pattern? y equals, by the way, a lot of you missed this on your test too, a times the quantity x minus h quantity squared plus k. So what variable squared normally? The x. In our example, what variable squared? The y, it turns it the other way. Okay, but we're going to do the inverse, right? So every x change the y, every y change the x. So this is now 4y, I don't know why I'm in red, equals 8x squared minus 12, right? You like? Divide both sides by 4. I am going to divide this one out. Here, let's save a step. Let me write the f to the negative 1 of x right now. And so what do you end up with? 2x squared minus 3. Oh, this is a, what kind of shape? With a vertex at what? Is this a max or a min? It is a min. All right, line of symmetry, x equals 0. Let's graph this thing. Let's graph the point 0, negative 3. It is right there. Right. Zero, negative three, right? How are we going to get the rest of the points? X, Y, shot, right? I'm at zero right now for X. Let's do a one. One squared is one. One times two is two. Two minus three is a negative one. I get the point one, negative one. One, negative one, right there. Okay, cool. Let's do the point. Oh, and by the way, line of symmetry. What other point do I have? Oh, I got that one. Look at that. Lo and behold, it's looking good, isn't it? All right? I'm one to the right of the line of symmetry. I'm one to the left of the line of symmetry. Let's do two. Two squared is four. Four times two is eight. Eight minus three is five. We got the point two five right there. And if I'm two that way, I'm going two this way. Draw your parabola. How did I miss my point? Oh, good. And there is the inverse of that. By the way, this point, five, two. Oh, ah, two, five, right? This point, 5, negative 2, negative 2, 5. Huh. This point, negative 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Huh. All right? Inverse. 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 We have another page. I better roll. We have five minutes. We're good. Okay. Inverse, switch them out. Do I have to know square roots anymore? Yeah.
Hey, we got to solve for y, right? So what are we going to do to both sides? Square both sides. So now we're at x squared equals y plus 1. Move the 1 to the other side, right? Oh, don't forget. Replace the y with f to the negative 1 of x, right? And there's the inverse. There is the inverse. All right, for time's sake, I'm not going to graph that. We're going to do um, situations like this. This has a restriction to it, and you end up with half of the parabola. Because doesn't this look like half of a parabola? And this is definitely a parabola. Interesting. All right. I don't have time to deal with that. There, I'll just sketch it for you. What is this? This is a zero negative one. So we got to go, that's zero negative one. So we got to go, I mean, negative one, zero. So we got to go zero negative one right there. And this is zero one. So we got to go one zero. And this is three two. So we got to go two three. And that's enough. And there's this other half technically doesn't exist because you can't have a negative in the radical sign value when you take the square root, right? So the domain was restricted and therefore we're stuck with only that part. That's the way it goes. Don't worry about that. That's the idea. That's the concept. All right, uh-oh, uh -oh, j of x. Now we won't know any idea what to do. Remember, this is in place of a y. So now swap out the x and the y. All right. All right, swap them out. Move the positive one to the other side. And hopefully... You'll understand you have to multiply both sides by the 5, so you need that parentheses. You end up with 5x minus 5 equals, what will my notation be? What would it be? j to the negative 1 of x on this one because they told us j of x, right? So this one, we got to use j to the negative 1 of x. Y-intercept, negative 5. Slope down five and to the right one, or let's go up five and to the left one. What in the world happened to that? Why don't I like that one? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, because it's a positive five slope. No wonder. Earth going fast, right? And you guys aren't even thinking either. So up five to the right one. And that's technically going to go right there, mirror image, across the 45-degree angle. Hey, you guys that were out, guess what? For a portion of the video, when I paused, I didn't start it. Oh, well. Sorry about that. Going to have to read the book. Number five, two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses. If, all right, watch now. If when you composition them, you get X as the result of composition. And it doesn't matter whether you do F composition G of X or G composition of X. And remember, this is the other notation for composition, which again, I like better because what are you doing? Putting the whole G function in for the variable of the f function. I, I prefer that notation. It really tells you what to do. And again, it could be these can swap. f and g could swap. It doesn't matter. When you composition them, you get x. That is, that's the case. So again, when you composition the functions, it equals x. So I got two minutes. Let's composition G and H, all right? All 
right, so watch where the variable is. I'm putting a parentheses. All right, I just wrote H or G, right? Five parentheses for the X minus two. And now I got to sub in to where the variable is the X plus two over five. Yes. These fives divide out. Positive 2 and negative 2 is 0, and what do you get as a result? X, guess what? They're inverses. They mathematically determined if they were inverses by compositioning them. You did it mathematically. You didn't have to figure out the inverse. We did it mathematically. All right, I don't know if you guys have these problems. Do you have them at the bottom? Do you have problems at the bottom of your page? Okay. The same numbers, I hope. Right? Okay. Mine, for some reason, didn't have it at the bottom of the page. All right. You're good? All right. Hey, stay up. Stay up. Stay up. Don't, don't get behind. Each day brings new material, and you got to stay up. you got to review. Abigail.